I had to go away and come up with some concepts and come up with some ideas that could actually feature an anti-gravity or gravity-type propulsion system. Well, this was one of the designs that we came up with. For a start, it wouldn't be limited to just flying in the air. It could fly anywhere, into space, even into water. Of course, it was a vertical takeoff design because it had a gravity engine inside, but it didn't look very exciting. And so we asked the artist to put some green rays underneath. That made it look far more futuristic. Let's be clear that not everyone in the company thought we should be doing it. There were quite a few that felt we make aircraft, we're good at it, and that's what we should be doing. But there were a few and some very senior people that felt OK, let's just have a, a little look at the future. And the concept became known as Green Glow. As head of Project Green Glow, Ron's job was to find and develop advanced propulsion systems to overcome gravity. The potential was enormous if it happened. It would totally change aerospace. And Ron was not alone. At around the same time in the US, NASA began a parallel project headed by aerospace engineer Mark Millis. It was uh, around 1996 when I was asked to lead the Breakthrough Propulsion Physics Project. Things like um, non-rocket space drives, uh, interstellar propulsion. To manipulating gravity. Things like that. For that project, the idea was to think radical, think big. Today, NASA says it has moved on and doesn't want to look back. I can't go in there uh, to talk about it now because uh, NASA's not doing that work right now. At BAE Systems, the same situation. The company no longer wants to discuss Project Green Glow. We asked them whether we could go there and talk to them about it, and they just said no. Gravity control is a dark and dangerous science. But like modern-day alchemy, it promises a glittering prize, but it can destroy your reputation. Years earlier, Ron had watched a gravity experiment bring down one of Britain's best-known scientists. This time I call for a volunteer. Professor of Engineering at Imperial College London, Eric Lathwaite. And then we're going to spin up the biggest gyro of the day, which is here. Like millions of others, Ron had been spellbound by Lathwaite's Christmas lecture at the Royal Institution in 1974. I can make him raise it. Now, Lathwaite suggested that by spinning a heavy wheel, he could make it counteract gravity. Ron has returned to the Royal Institution to try and recreate the effect. Does it feel light? It does. It feels very light. With the help of fellow engineer, Dr. Adam Wojcik. If I slow down, it feels... What I think was at the back of Lathwaite's mind was that there was a force in one direction more than in the other, and so the gyro will start to rise up. And that gives you the illusion as though it's losing weight. It isn't. It's just an illusion. But is it light? When the gyroscope is rotated in the same direction it's spinning, it's given an upward lift. And if I rotate in the opposite oh, sense. Oh, that does look heavy. <laughs> oh, careful, wow. careful, careful, careful. When it's rotated in the opposite direction, the opposite happens and it seems to get heavier. Still hoping to make gravity control a subject of serious research, Lathwaite acknowledged his mistake. Yet his reputation was permanently damaged. He was snubbed by the academic establishment and felt compelled to leave his position at the Royal Institution. Professor Lathwaite got into a lot of trouble with this, really because of the claim that it got lighter, which is anti-gravity. And academics jump on any anti-gravity device as being impossible. Well, it's not impossible. 
It's just we don't know how to do it. But we should look. It's like flight in the last century. In those days, anybody that said they could fly was looked upon as a lunatic. The dream of lifting effortlessly from the Earth is not confined to engineers. Despite being so contentious, many academics are rather seduced by the idea. Dr. Tamara Davis is among them. From a little kid, I always wanted to go and visit other planets and go up into space. And to be able to have a form of propulsion that could get me there easily would be fantastic. But we don't yet know whether we can manipulate gravity or have any control over it. There is one fundamental force we know we can control, which we've used to build our modern world. Electromagnetism. It gives us a tantalizing illusion of gravity control when we levitate a magnet. <laughs> Electromagnetic repulsion balances the weight of the magnet by using the same magnetic polarity in the base. We know that like charges repel. So here we just have a magnetic field that's levitating a magnet. So this is nothing mysterious. This is just electromagnetism. Let's see if I can get this across. <laughs> the power of control we get from electromagnetism lies in the fact that we can change its polarity and make it either repel or attract. So in electromagnetism, we have positive charges and negative charges, and they tend to attract each other. <laughs> if you have a positive charge and a positive charge, it will repel from each other. But wouldn't it be great if we could get gravity to work in reverse and be able to levitate things using gravity? Only problem is there isn't any negative gravity, there isn't any anti-gravity that pushes. Gravity always pulls, as far as we know. The reason seems to be that unlike electromagnetism, gravity has only one kind of polarity, positive. One mass is simply attracted to another. Gravity and, and electromagnetism are completely different forces. There's a very special property of gravity. That is that it adds up. Inside an atom, there's a positive nucleus surrounded by negative electrons. So the electromagnetic value cancels out, whereas there's nothing to cancel out its mass. So the force on one atom adds to the force on another atom, and so they generate an attractive gravitational force. So if you get enough of those atoms together, like in, in a planet or in a star, then the gravitational force is very strong. So gravity is different. It adds up as you increase the amount of matter in a way the other forces don't. 